Hey coach, I'm so glad you found us on YouTube. Let me help you through this great journey we call coaching. I've won a lot of championships. I have been in your shoes. Let me help you. I took over a program that hadn't won in 30 years. You know, NBA guys, lots of championships. Let me help you become a better basketball coach. Um, so go over and check out teachhoops.com and enjoy the video. All right, welcome to High School Hoops, episode 86. Um, so we are keeping everything relevant in terms of the world pandemic that's going on right now. Um, so we're going to talk about some different topics here. Uh, we do this, this is, this is real world. So Jake went to get some coffee. So, um, before he gets back, I want to give a big shout out to our two sponsors. First of all, Dr. Dish, um, the number one shooting machine. Like I said, last week or a couple of weeks ago, you should go and buy that, um, home one right now. I can't imagine Buy an IC3, buy one of those, mention Coach Unplugged, they'll give you $350 off your next purchase of a shooting machine, not the IC3, um, which is one that just kind of hooks in the top. But you should still buy it and tell them that, call them and tell them they might give you a little deal. They won't give you that because that's about how much it costs. Um, and then also, this is the time to join um, teachhoops.com. I can't imagine a better time to join, um, you know, virtual learning is what the world is doing, and that's what Teach Hoops does. It teaches you hoops. I guess I could have called it Teach Basketball, but I think Teach Hoops sounded better. Anyway, I never told you the story that we, I wish I'd have kept all the names we came up with before we came up with Teach Hoops. I love it's a, name Teach it's a fun. It's a fun process trying to name something. Like, I think eventually we, my brother, I think my brother or my sister-in-law came up with Teach Hoops. But we were literally at the at the lake house in New Hampshire, and literally I was just like we were writing things down. We must have come up with like two hundred names, and then eventually it landed. It's it is a fun process. It can be frustrating if you kind of let you got to free flow it. But um, anyway, so go over and check out teachhoops dot com. All right, what's this week, Coach? I told him you went to get your coffee. Did you get your coffee? I did. I I'm starting to feel better already. And All right, I good. I'm I drinking mine out of a goofy cup. So I had uh, a winter hat on before, and I had to go to a baseball cap. My I, I won't be able to get a haircut for a couple weeks, so my hair is starting to get a little long. So oh, I know. I always get my hair cut before tournament starts, yep. so I should be good for a couple more weeks. The good thing about losing your hair is I don't have to. It's <laughs> the, there's a lot of stuff out on Facebook right now, like women are going, "Oh, everyone's going to find out my real hair color soon." <laughs> oh, oh well, you'll be okay. It will be all right. Yes, there's bigger issues in the world. All right, uh, what, episode 86. Wait, first off, remind me that we do have full timeouts to set aside. I, we didn't do one last week, so just remind me to do that. At the Are we going to do those? Yeah, I have a bunch of them. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, last week was kind of a state – two weeks ago was kind of a state of emergency. So, okay. For sure. All right. Um, so, um, again, I talked about uh, on our last podcast, uh, uh, that our little fun special announcement, that all of our uh, topics in April are going to be – totally relatable to what's cur currently happening in our situation with the coronavirus and the constant lockdown of not being able to do anything in regards to with our players and our programs. So um, we develop topics that are going to be completely adaptive and connected to you so you can continue to support your players and yourself and your and your staff as you move forward into the next season, hopefully. Hopefully. All right. you're, you're, I mean, are you at all worried that the season's not going to happen? A little bit. Next year? I do. I haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, I guess I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm a little pessimistic. So, so let's do the math. Let's do the math here before we talk about the, the, the topic. Um, because I just want to talk about stuff that's relevant. So we're, we're in April right now. So April, May, June, July, August, September. So that gives me five months till football season. September, October, November. It gives me seven months till basketball season. Uh, that'll be close, won't it? I'm not convinced football's going to happen. No. I don't know. I often think... But the problem is if we send them back to school, they're going to do sports. Yeah, oh, for sure. But I, my, my biggest concern is that how at, at some point, they're going to start to allow things to happen because we're not going to be able... Financially, people are got to be able to do things. You know what I mean? It might yeah, be and, the thing is, and the thing is, it's not about... it's and Again... I'm not a doctor, but it's not about salt. <laughs> 60 to 80 percent of us are eventually going to get this. It's more about being able to get the help you need when you do get it. If you turn to the point where you need a ventilator or go to the hospital, 
So I think what they're thinking is they're, they're, they're watching China to see if there's a second wave, um, right. which I think there will be, but I don't know if you're going to shut. It will be interesting. I never thought about it. I'm more worried about my son going off to school in September. Um, you know, hopefully he gets to go. I'm not, I'm not paying what I need to pay for him to go to, to school to, to do Khan Academy, though. I think colleges could be – a school like that, I think, could adjust and just slide their calendar back, too, maybe. Yeah, a smaller, a smaller school with a different enrollment type might be able to push their calendar back. I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting. You know, people, you know are, people are still thinking that we're going to have spring season for club soccer. And I just, oh, there's uh, no way you're having spring seasons for club soccer. So I'm, I'm trying to just inform my coaches and working and pretending that it's going to happen, and hopefully it may be in some weird way, but working on maybe best practices and stuff like that to prepare for hopefully fall. Um, but I, I'm, I, I'm not expecting anything to happen. I'm right not now. either. I, yeah, I, I, I tend to be a pessimist more than an optimist sometimes with this. But the last thing will, the last thing will really be open for most things will be schools and, um, and whatever things that are connected with them. Yeah, I don't think like I've already thought about. Okay, so I got to get some more checks because I'm gonna have I, I, I'm running low on checks for camp because I'm gonna have to write checks. I deposited a bunch of checks for camp. Um, it camps the second week in June, second or third week in June. I don't think it's going to happen. So I got to, I got to, that's actually, I got to add that to my list. Um, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. You know, even with like, think about uh, like tryouts and all those things with, at the club level, AAU level, all those things. Like, I just don't know how things are going to happen. I, everybody's going to be, it's going to be crazy. You know, like I said, this is just a relevant topic. Sorry to get a little off topic. Yeah, we're a little off topic. Okay, not go really, ahead. So, we're really not off topic because everybody else is thinking. And everyone's about. asking the same questions, I think, to themselves. Okay, so what's what's the topic this week? All right, so uh, how to conduct skill development virtually. Um, something that me and you have had, uh, I've learned to do through T-Troops before um, when I was a high school coach and things that I do right now as a uh, director of academy of a soccer program and with my other basketball players in college and so forth i have done things conducting still development virtually and so how how as coaches can we service our players to do that okay so shameless plug this is when you should go buy dr dish the outside one if, yep. if drew was in 10th grade i'd buy one tomorrow for my court i'd buy one tomorrow but i don't need to do it because he's going off to college um so uh Yes. So here's what I think you need to do. We talked about, you know, a couple of weeks ago about supporting and, and doing all that kind of stuff. So I think the kids are going to need to get back to their new reality. Um, so I, you can read your kids at this point, but I think they want structure. I think they want um, to get back to that new norm, um, which is maybe not seeing their friends and not playing five on five. So what I think you can do at this point is a lot of, of skill work and individual work. Um, again, shameless plug. I'm, I'm, I'm going to work on a course on teach hoops for this. I'm, I'm going to call it COVID-19 course. That's what I'm going to call it. Um, then I'm going to put stuff in there. You know, I have workouts and stuff that I've done with my son. Um, I think the key is two things shots. So you gotta, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, um, it's like a golfer. You know, if you haven't putted in three months, your putting's going to suck. You got to keep shooting. Um, game like shots, game like repetitions. You got to track it. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is I think ball handling is something they can do. Um, there isn't a coach in the world, there isn't a high school coach in the world that doesn't want somebody that can shoot and dribble. <laughs> um, and those, all you need for those is a hoop and a basketball and you, and what to do. Um, if you've got those, you're good to go. Um, so I think those are the keys for uh, skill workout. Um, you know, obviously staying in shape and all that kind of stuff, if you're thinking of playing the spring season, that's easy, you can get out for a run, you can do your own. It's a little bit harder to push yourself to do that, but what I would do, and I tell students, and, and I tell all my players this, that you gotta track this, you gotta keep it in a notebook, you know, I have an Excel sheet I give my guys. You got to do something to track shots, to keep track of shots, um, because, you know, it's getting warm enough now in the middle of April to, to get outside. Um, you know, it doesn't matter where you live in the continental United States. And if you live somewhere else, then we got to talk. But um, you can start getting outside. It's 
not that cold. Um, most of you, if you if you don't have a ball, then find somebody that has one. It's not that hard to find a basketball or a rim. Oh, or uh, you need to go get one now. I encourage your kids to get one now because sooner or later, I don't know what the what the situation is going to be with stores and the warehouses and stuff. Like, right. I know there's tons of basketballs available, and uh, you know, this is just time to go pick one up. I think the supply chain is okay, actually, right yeah, now. I for think. Sure. So um, uh, I want to touch base on a couple a couple things that you said. We can continue. Uh, I think it's important to create a warehouse of info. So having a place where kids can find all of it in one spot. Ooh, that's uh, a good would, idea. Yeah. Like a folder, like a Dropbox folder or something. I would actually think with most kids in high school, they are familiar with using Google classroom. Yep. Or Schoolology. Uh, I would use Google classroom uh, just because you could actually, and I've been bouncing and thinking of some ideas. Uh, you can create mat materials and materials and topics of each skill development, you can put videos and so forth in there. The other thing that it's cool um, to track things, you can actually create assignments and the kids can continually add their, their stats and their times right into their assignment. So they don't have to submit it, but it's an ongoing document that they can use. Okay. So for example, I, I'm sure that Steve will um, give you his, uh, his uh, shot tracker on ttubes.com, um, be able to see how his kids are going to track shots and you could totally create a Google assignment using that. And the kids could basically edit it themselves. Having a place for have that is awesome. You could even have online discussions with your players on Google classroom or schoolology. Um, and having one warehouse is the key. Um, I think if you use email, I think information gets lost. Um, I think having a warehouse of communication, whether using remind as well, maybe having two, you know, my niece works for remind my niece. Yeah. She's been in lockdown in San Francisco for, she went to Middlebury too, where Drew's going. Um, but anyway, side note. Uh, but she, um, she said they are crazy busy right now. Like they're the number five app downloaded on the app store or something, because it's a great way to communicate. Um, it's a remind app. Go ahead. I, I didn't mean and to you, I know that I think that Google, Google is connect. You can connect Google with remind. So okay. they work really well together. So okay. like you can make documents, share documents, and you can connect Remind with it. I think those two components together and creating it would be great. Um, like Steve said, he's going to create a course. Um, if you want me to create something and teach people how to do a tutorial video, I'm open to doing that as well. Um, how to use Google Classroom. I would love that. I, you know, I'd love that for me. Like, okay. yeah, do that. I would love that. I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring all the listeners right now. I would like that for me because um, I, I would love to use Google. I think, I, I think you're right. The kids are probably more used to using Google Classroom. Um, so what I can do, and I don't know where we're going to warehouse it. Maybe it's a plug for T-Tubes. Um, I, I can design a course um, how to use Google Classroom in this day and age to uh, do skill development virtually. And we, okay. call a, we can call it the ball in the basket course. You know, um, oh, I like that. Um, the last thing that I, um, and I can start working on that this week. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Interesting, um, because I use Google classroom all the time. You do? I don't. It, it, it looks, it looks more simple than Schoology. Like, oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. I would, I would definitely move everything to Google because. Yeah. But I mean, why? why I like the, I like, you know, why school, you know, why I like Schoology. It looks like Dropbox. Oh, see, I don't know any of that stuff. I'm just a Google person because all of us have, all our kids have Chromebooks. Um, you know, you can, you literally can uh, save everything online. It doesn't over, overzealous your hard drive on your computer. So it's all based on, you know, warehousing everything, kind of like you said, Dropbox. Right. But in, in a different form. And the kids yeah. are so familiar with it. Yeah. I'm totally kind of excited to do that. So that's another, this is what happens conversations, especially when they're relevant. They, they are. are okay. The last thing I talked about here is mastering staying in shape. You know, I think it's important to provide other things besides shooting and ball handling, uh, like adding workouts, like push ups and different sit ups and abs and stuff, getting them to do those type of things, resistant band training. Um, right now they can go to the, uh, a local store and get a resistant band for very, very cheap. Um, to, to tone their muscles and so forth, uh, to keep them active as well. Because they're not going to be able to get in the weight room and they're not going to be able to get those type of weight room activities in their house unless they have them already, you know, a full body workout stuff, you know, right. providing those opportunities is, uh, I think, huge for kids as well. No, I agree. I think all that is, is yeah. 
I mean, and, and the thing is, I think they want, I think they're getting to the point now, this time in April, that they want stuff. They do. And I think a Google Classroom um, is a very way, easy way to connect with your players if you have them on email and they all have the same. Um, I think that if they all have the same school account and so forth and you're connected to the district and you have a school email, it's really easy to do. I used it with my kids at the high school program and at the collegiate level. It's just really a nice little thing to use. Awesome. Anything else, Coach? Oh, we got a full time out. Go ahead. All right. Hold on one second. So first off, I want to talk about – um, I found this really good link and then we can send it put on the show notes. Um, it's called the 20 questions you should ask yourself as a coach through USA basketball. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to modify them to be discussion questions for us, Okay. but I'm going to just choose one from them today. Uh, the question is, do you treat every player the same? No. Why or why? And why? <laughs> because they're not all the same. Okay. I don't treat all my students the same either. Um, I treat them fair. Um, but I don't treat them the fair, same. Fair and um, equitable. That's equitable, I, yeah, that's equitable. That. But I don't treat them this. I mean, that's that, yeah. No, I mean, those are the those are the, like you often use the word the dinosaur coach. The coach that's the dinosaur coach is the one that treats every player the same, and they are not coaching anymore. It's just no, not how it works. No, it's like, and what pushes player A's buttons and what pushes player D's pr- buttons are totally different. And right. player A maybe put in 120 hours in the last two weeks, and the other player put in two hours. I'm going to treat them fairly. I'm going to treat them like – but this one's earned stuff. This one hasn't earned anything, you know. Um, so, no. Well, one I, guy... I, look at, I look at the standpoint of you look at your top coaches at the collegiate level, right? Right. They are coaches that do not treat every player the same. They no. do treat their players they treat their players equitable and fair. I, I'll just use Coach K, for example. He has not had the same type of player everywhere, every time in his program. But no. Uh, they, however, they still seem to assim, uh, assimilate and follow the Duke basketball path. And that's right. why Did you watch a couple of weeks ago during March Madness, they put the Kentucky um, Duke game on TV? The, the 92, 92 game? 92 game? Oh, I, I've watched it multiple times. You oh, my God. It. I forgot how good a game it was. It was like make bass, maze bass, maze bass. It was like fantastic. Oh, uh, the, the only issue I had with the whole thing was it wasn't in high def. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> that's like, when you know you have too much time on your hand if you're complaining about high definition. Well, it was, no, but I mean, it was grainy. It was, it was literally, it was, it was grainy. It's twenty, yeah. you know. Look yeah, how old it, it is. Yeah, it's um, bad. I would it was love bad. to. Maybe, maybe we can help. Uh, maybe we can suggest that to them because it'd be nice to have those great games. But the other thing is just like you don't treat Grant Hill completely different. You treat Grant Hill or a kid like Grant Hill and Shane Battier who are very similar in demeanor and player-wise. Right. completely different than um, uh, the Elton Brand of the world or a Jabbar. Every, every player that they've had is completely different. They're not all the same. You know, They have certain qualities, but as, as a program, you've got to treat every player a little bit differently. Every player differently. All right, till next week, Coach. Stay all healthy. Right. All right. Yep. Bye. Bye. Hey, coach. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you're looking for more just like it, check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. 14 day free trial, a mentor in me. Let me help you become a better coach.